What's up guys, Kevin Cage back with another cryptocurrency update. Be sure to like and subscribe as you continue doing your own research and let's get right into it. So apologies if the beginning is a bit boring. I wanna go over some very interesting stats and I think they're very telling of what's to come. And just remember if you guys are insecure about your investment because you're focused on current price, when in doubt, zoom out, look at the macro, look at the global events way beyond just DLT, look at all the technologies, look at the growing, Year over year, like even the CAGR, the growth of payments and e-commerce, just know what you hold. Please understand that there is an issue with pre-funded capital. We know that XRP can reduce these pre-funded accounts. And there's a multitude of other use cases that all of these crypto assets are discovering. It will not just be XRP. It will be a multitude of assets that will complement one another. Just like CBDCs are going to complement new systems as well, just as XRP and CBDCs are complementary. So let's get into it. So I wanted to reference this. Obviously, we know that Ripple Swell has ended and Ripple came out with this really cool little document, Ripple's Blockchain and Payments Report 2020 from adoption to growth. They show, you know, the overall adoption curve. They go over a bunch of stats and a bunch of polls from res respondents in the financial institution or, you know, the banking space. So I think this is really telling to see where we're at in the demand. And I kind of want to go through a few points. And as always, I do retweet this. So if you guys want to go check this out and read it for yourselves, it is only 21 pages really really good read going over the typical regions north africa middle east northern africa um you know all throughout the apac region latin america south america etc all right so what i want to go through right here is this blockchain unlocks business growth and of course they're primarily alluding to xrp here but a variety of digital assets right here the four top pain points with traditional cross-border payment rails are High costs, expensive, slow speed, expensive liquidity requirements, because obviously they have to have sometimes cash on hand as well. If there are liquid corridors, what I like to call is just in case money and lack of standardization. Every country, every bank, um, every SME compared to a tier one bank might have a different type of form that you're filling out. It's not maybe some routing numbers are 13 digits, others are, you know, eight digits. And I'm just making up arbitrary numbers here for an example. And obviously, <laughs> you guys can imagine what that would do. And we understand Chris Larson's analogy for even logistics when they had a standard shipping freight. Remember how much overall just production grew right here. Reducing dependency on pre-funding international accounts. These groups, we have what, roughly around the globe, we can say anywhere from $2 trillion, $5 trillion, even the figures as high as $27 trillion that is dormant capital tied up because of the correspondent banking network being so inefficient. What You tell me what happens when this capital is freed. And I do believe in Jevons' paradox. When an increase in efficiency for payments comes, our demand will increase with that as well. So that is very, very powerful, specifically when you're talking about unlocking trillions of dollars. And that is not even XRP's potential or really only use case. 59% of respondents find a real-time settlement, RTS, remember we see RTGS, gross settlement, of cross-border payments to be key to business growth. 70% believe that RTS, real-time settlement, can drive business expansion, and 68% believe real-time settlement can help win market share. What are businesses going to do when they have liquid digital assets? And we're gonna go over why they want a digital asset specifically for this. As I said, um, my Moment in Time video came out with XRP Army News, and just like Chris Larson, and just like many people have said, I believe it's gonna be a combination of distributed ledgers, like distributed networks, digital assets that move said value as well, and obviously interoperability protocols that are going to unlock and create this internet of value. And we're gonna talk about the effects of the pandemic, and yet all this chaos has showed businesses, SMEs, banks, the importance and basically the strain that the system put on them, to, they can't even handle it. The liquidity requirements, the fees, I, I think it's very, it speaks levels in this type of chaos as bad as it is, and my heart goes out to all that were affected health-wise or financially, this chaos brings order to some degree, all right, even if it takes years. Realizing one too many uh, cost savings, so 59% view blockchain networks that have a one or one API connection, just think of obviously RippleNet connecting to the XRPL, connection to many international partners as the key benefit to delivering cost savings. Single API, RippleNet obviously is cloud as well, you guys can read between the lines, all right? Next, just wanted to go over right here. Despite economic slowdown, the demand for payment services has grown above average for respondents. 80% stated that they have experienced growth year over year, with 30% recording a significant amount in July. Yes, and as we know, there are, you know, billions, what is it, 
just over 3 billion people that are in the category of unbanked and underbanked. And the majority of them might not even be within distance of a physical bank. So what do they do? Some don't have bank accounts. They just have mobile banking and they have a cell phone. So yeah, payments are still needed. It is, we already have the internet of information and data. We can send emails. Yet to send $5 across the globe, not to your friend, but to have it settle on the core ledger of the central banks, which we don't see, that, <laughs> why does that take so long? Why is it faster to actually send a picture of a $5 bill than actually send said value? It makes you wonder. So yes, the internet of value is upon us and it will be adapting. And those that take advantage of this transfer of wealth are going to do extremely well. Right here, blockchain is scaling beyond payments, mere payments. And there's, I saw a comment the other day in a video, I think it was my Algorand video, and um, the gentleman said something about, because I was saying, you know, XRP uh, Algorand for payments or something, and they were talking about the Singaporean government utilizing Zillica for payments. Well, you have to understand, payments is a very, very broad brush. There's so much that can be incorporated with payments, such as syndicated lending and anything in between. So just keep in mind, there's a variety, a variety of pain points in all of these sectors. And I love Zill. I do like Zillica, believe it or not, and its sharding capability. I think that there's going to be different assets that have different use cases. Each country, each business, each region will have their own preference. Two prominent areas are, this is the big boy money. This isn't the tiny remittance that we're seeing on-demand liquidity go after. This is the big money right here. And we know that, you know, R3 is working on things like this. And I'm not saying XRP, but I'm saying R3 is working on DLT with all of this. And it might not have anything to do with settlement per se. I know Spoonta's reconciliation. I just want to repeat this because I've seen some videos go out. And yes, I'm well aware of this. But you have to understand, these are this is big money and big value. We already had Spoonta process a couple hundred million transactions uh, yeah, it's I'm excited for what's to come. And yes, I do believe that in the future, I wouldn't be surprised even if it is just on a permission basis to have digital assets like XRP settling portions of actual trade finance or, you know, capital market payments overall. All right, so blockchain can be leveraged across the enterprise. And yes, these groups know, I mean, they've been working on this forever. Just think of groups like even uh, digital asset holdings since like 2015, 2014. All right, with Blythe Masters, you know, background as deep as it gets. All right, also just showing right here, we have trade finance, supply chain management, capital markets, and you guys can think of a variety of digital assets. I'm not thinking just XRP when I'm looking at that. I think that would be rather, you know, myopic of me. Now, I really like this. Section three, digital assets, a question of when, not if. This isn't us just hoping and hoping, you know, we buy an asset and hoping it goes up. The assets that win and actually solve real problems of real customers and are utility based not 100 percent speculation based are going to do well it's just how the tokenomics work for certain assets that i talk about on this channel and we haven't seen anything yet right here to fully harness the power of blockchain for growth barriers to blockchain adoption must be reduced overall respondents cite concerns regarding lack of regulatory clarity and implementation costs and security interesting Right here, Blockchain and Payments 2020 report proves three critical things overall. Blockchain payment solutions are scaling, absolutely. Digital assets are increasingly being considered for facilitating payments, especially when paired with blockchain tech, yes. And industry innovators are realizing significant growth even amid COVID-19, absolutely, and we already went over that. Right here, clearly the global pandemic has resulted in payment services providers rethinking their business and operating models altogether and adopting to the new digital first world in order to survive. Digitalization is upon us. It is a push towards a cashless society. Not 100% cashless by any means anytime soon, but cashless, less physical cash, more digital, more transparency, and as bad as it is, more control. Survival includes Preserving liquidity, blockchain tech is being increasingly adopted in emerging markets and the availability of liquidity is among the underlying reasons. Yes, absolutely. All right, just think of XRP as the financial uber lubricant, lubricant, the financial lubricant of the system to help these gears start churning or turning. Right here, digital asset adoption increasing for domestic and cross-border payments. Yes, we know that there's international demand. It's way more friction. There's a bunch more friction and um, demand to actually resolve that but there's actually going to be domestic as well as we approach near real time or real time payments meaning instantaneously not even waiting an hour and also hopefully approaching zero like 
the cost. Hopefully it's cheaper and cheaper and cheaper instead of 3% fees, 1% fee. We want to get to, you know, 0.01% of a fee. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen. And who knows how long that'll take, but that's just the way I see things. It's just like, what was it? I, I saw a stat that uh, every Google search uses so many terawatts of a light bulb. It was really interesting. It's going to be the same concept for imagine if you had to pay a fee sending an email. That's ridiculous. Remember when we were texting back in the day? If you guys remember using T9 and we had the, you know, you pay as you go and use the minutes, but now you just have an unlimited plan and you essentially it's free texting. The same thing for payments. I would not be surprised to see something like that or even like micro streaming of payments, which we're already seeing with XRP. So this report reveals that nearly 100% of respondents state that their company would consider using digital assets as a currency or a payment settlement means. And that's what I think about ding, ding, ding for XRP, an increase of five percentage points since 2018. Interesting. And obviously you guys can smell the capital. You see the VCs, you see these hedge funds, you see the regulations changing. Banks can now hold crypto assets. Come on now. If you guys don't think that there's going to be a future for the open permissionless networks such as XRP and some other assets that are going to solve real problems, you you shouldn't be watching this video because I think that you're going to miss it. Not financial advice. Right here, I already shared that. Right here, really cool, and we're almost finished up going over these stats. So companies view digital assets as a means to accelerate expansion. Just think, you know, blockchain can help unlock said value to other countries and currencies. 82% said or said not yet in pilot or proof of concept. So POC responded with the second highest interest in leveraging digital assets and cross-border payments. That's exciting because that is a huge demand of people that have not even tested have not even piloted or even done any POCs using these digital assets and are interested specifically in utilizing them for cross-border transfers mm, or transactions. Notice here, making cross-border payments though, to speed up mainstream adoption, they describe the availability of liquidity as an important feature in the use and implementation of digital assets. And I'm sure you guys have seen that flywheel diagram that just came out that uh, Ripple Swell produced on this document as well really exciting and yes i know liquidity is this catch-all term that we use and essentially we just want depth of liquidity we want a bunch of buyers and sellers at a variety of price points at all times and that will allow of course xrp to be what we call more liquid as that financial instrument or that medium of exchange for assets to solve its real purpose and then just like that uh what was it the uh for the car engine the sump the oil sump that martin volk always uses that is literally the perfect analogy to explain how XRP appreciates. If you guys are curious what that was regarding, um, if you're new, I did retweet it. Martin Volk, V-A-L-K, definite follow on Twitter. Really cool, dude. All right. Right here, shared by XRP Stored. It is also in the document I was going through. So blockchain adoption at scale, growth for blockchain and in payments. So today we are around here, they're saying. So we're expediting move to go live and we're boosting with digital assets. And then as we can see, it repeats the cycle. So then it goes back to proving value, pro proving fe uh, feasibility, moving to production, building trust and demand, and it just keeps going. And this flywheel effect is a very uh, real thing. And I'd imagine, and this is speculation for you guys that don't like hype, I'd imagine that this flywheel will also apply to not only demand, but if you know you have a basic understanding in economics, it would apply to the price as well. All right, so status, guys, you can visit his website at status.hr. I want to share this. I know I've gone over this in the past, but as we can see, approximately, and I believe this is based off the wallets for XRP, so I could be wrong, but I'm just going off that assumption that 2 million people have invested into XRP because there are 2 million wallets or, you know, XRP accounts. Now, keep in mind, this number may be way less than we actually think because maybe some of us have four accounts or four exchanges on Coinbase, Binance, Kraken. Those are each, if you even have a little XRP or 20 XRP on each account, that's a wallet. So in reality, if some of us has four, four exchanges or even, you know, eight exchanges and some coldware wallets or ledgers, that's a lot. So this number could be closer to 1 million, you know, a little, uh, not a multiplier effect, but you know, far less. So notice only 0.025% of people in the world out of a global population of 7.8 billion people, which is growing as well, have invested in XRP. And of course, the finite supply that cannot grow is 100 billion XRP divided by 7.8 billion. That's approximately 12.8 XRP. So approximately 13 XRP 
for every single person if they did invest in XRP. As we know, this is gonna this is an open source protocol. I think this will be one of the many digital assets that will basically just run under the financial system and be invisible. We don't know how credit cards work. Many people don't know how phones work and go from digital to analog. It's gonna be the same thing. Um, we are just a small number in the scheme of things. All right, there's only 322 XRP available for every PayPal user as well with 310 million. Very cool. I just enjoy these little stats. And then also we have, so let's see, 21 people of the world population can own just, you know, under 5,000 XRP as well. Very cool. All right. If you guys were curious about this, I don't know if you uh, are busy on Twitter or anything, but Galgatron was going back and forth. And obviously we know that the XRP ledger on the website has successfully said 58 million ledger plus ledger successfully closed without an error ever, meaning they always close successfully. Now, there was a scare years ago, and there was talks of, did the ledger actually slow down? Did it halt? H-A-L-T, halt, being the key word, and what really happened? So, take it with a grain of salt, but David Schwartz, CTO of Ripple, and one of the you know original architects back in the day, and yes, I know he came on later with Arthur Brito and Jed McCaleb, he's a little later, but he even said this, Ledger production and consensus was not really affected back then, but if you were waiting for a payment to fully confirm, you could have had to wait much longer than usual. I think slowdown is most accurate. Nothing really halted, right? And, you know, ignore his little grammar typos. This man is a genius regardless, um, you know, so I appreciate him shedding some light. And I love that he is just so interactive with the community. All right. Next, so I wanted to go over this. So Stort XRP, guys, XRP underscore Stort, just sharing on Ripple's matchmaking organization. It did show some new partners that have not been discovered, I believe. Well, maybe he, you know, discovered it with uh, Crypto Eddie and what was it? Consistent Benny? I'm blanking on the name. But when the list was made, he mentioned that he noticed some new RippleNet partners that he's never seen as senders. And this was Hami. I'm going to say Hami because I heard I watched the video Hami Express, not Hammy. I don't want to say, I want to say Hammy. And then Bergen Bank, and Bergen Bank, actually, if I'm you know pronouncing that right, is Kuwait's second largest conventional bank by assets. So you can go right on this website and notice uh, Hami Express, send anytime, anywhere. Reminds me of the Rick Ripple presentation where they said, you know, anywhere, anytime, um, you know, it was, it was just really cool just talking about the overall, you know, internet of value, so to speak. So you guys can check this out as well. Send anytime, anywhere. Sounds like the perfect customer talking about how easy it is to, you know, create an account, a few clicks, you know, basic uh, email, send your money, etc. Super simple. And then here with uh, Bergen or Bergen Bank, we can see right here. So they are Kuwait's second largest conventional bank by assets. But interestingly enough, also besides having, you know, dozens of branches. Bergen is one of the youngest banks in Kuwait. Just wanted to share. All right. Next up, I want to mention this and then we'll call it a day. So Coinbase Commerce, guys, if you're not familiar, this is a platform that enables merchants anywhere in the world to accept cryptocurrency payments in a fully decentralized way. So notice just with a little code, they can allow and accept any type of cryptocurrency. We know a lot of gateways and, you know, merchants are accepting more and more crypto assets, which is great. And it's great, you know, creating this type of open um, I guess financial system more so, but yes, I know there's these behemoths that are centralized and controlling it. So, you know, there's two sides to a coin. Just wanted to share that. And right here, now they have the capability for these merchants to easily convert crypto on Coinbase Commerce using Coinbase. So notice we can do the same thing as retail users on Coinbase.com. Just wanted to share. So notice this, and I, I take this with a grain of salt and I kind of read it, uh, you know, facetiously, like sarcastically, at Coinbase, our mission is to create an open financial system of the world. Um, you know, I take that with a grain of salt. But just interesting, they're seeing this, and obviously this can be for crypto utilizing for sending, borrowing, earning, spending, etc. And at the end of the day, any push for crypto adoption, any push for digitalization, any push for attention towards distributed networks is one step in the right direction. The future is not going to be 100% centralized, and it will not be 100% distributed or decentralized. I think it'll be in the middle. It'll have centralized some decentralized frameworks, and overall it'll just be a bit more distributed for redundancy, for security, for a variety of reasons, and also just a whole better you know storage capability as well. All right, so I'm sick of hearing myself talk. Hopefully you guys like some of those stats. Bottom line though, that I mean I thought was most telling out of all of this was essentially 100% of respondents said that their company would consider using digital assets as not only a currency, but a payment payment settlement means 
You tell me what that means. I have no worries that XRP is going to zero or anything, despite even short-term swings that may be coming. What I only, con my only concern is, is how early are we? Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.